Good evening. You are watching the midweek edition of the news on DBS Television. Thanks for joining us. But before we get into the news in full, let's get a headline. They were alleged to be specialists in assaulting high personalities in society, but also for carrying out organized armed robbery but they have now been rendered harmless. The group of thieves was presented to the media this day in the town of Yaoundé. Details of this story and other stories in this edition of the newscast. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. Welcome back, dear televiewers, and thank you for joining us. That is, if you just joined us on this edition of the English language newscast on DBS television. Um, I am Cynthia Nguemo, and uh, to begin with this edition of the newscast, like we told you on our sole headline for tonight, a gang of suspected criminals uh, specialized in harassing high personalities and also for carrying out organized armed robbery have been presented to men and women of the media this day in the town of Yaoundé. Their arrest is a result of fruitful investigations and operations carried out by the Center Regional Office of Judicial Police and the Chief of this Department of Police, who is Chief, uh, who is Moise Emane Emane. Atebon Adventure took part in this occasion, that is the presentation of these bandits, and here is his report. The six suspected armed robbers fell into the dragnet of the judicial police on February 11 after allegedly making away with electronic accessories, money, and vehicle of a university lecturer. The gang of three unknown persons robbed the, uh, the doyen, the dean of studies of FCGA, Douala University, and uh, they take away the vehicle and all the victim items. To, uh, the time that took for the police take to yes. make investigation, yes. uh, one week, but all the robbers have been arrested less than 24 hours. The men who have been under custody in Yaoundé have as leader Ilyasu Rago, who was intercepted in Gaoundere. Judicial police officials reveal that the 39-year-old is an ex-convict who is known for masterminding criminal activities. We advise our fellow um, populations that if you are victims of similar attack, please report to the uh, regional division of judicial police for the center or the nearest police unit around you. Or you can call uh, the free police number 1500 that functions 24 hours 7 or call a seal on 117 and the police, your police will do the job. The suspects are bound to face the heavy hands of the law if found guilty of the charges levied against them. Um, regarding the alarming rate of COVID-19 infections and deaths in Cameroon of recent, the government has called on every citizen to be strict about the respect of COVID-19 barrier measures in order to stem down the spread. And this habit Cameroonians are gradually picking up with. However, the fear of a possible second lockdown is a main issue amongst Cameroonians today, as Mange Venasu tells us in the following report. COVID-19 scare is gradually settling among Cameroonians with the recent rise in cases of the pandemic. As announced by the Minister of Public Health, the increase in cases would have been as a result of the negligence of Cameroonians to respect barrier measures. As such, precautionary measures are being adopted to mitigate the spread of the virus. We have uh, wash hand points and uh, as early as the students come in in the morning, we make sure that uh, there is a thermal flash. Uh, we screen, uh, but away from that, we have wash and points. But the most important thing also is that we've been stressing over the past few weeks the wearing of face masks as prescribed by the government and the World Health Organization. One of the areas hard hit is the educational sector where teachers have simply crossed their fingers, praying that a second lockdown should not be announced. We hope it doesn't happen again. 
it happened last time and there was adverse effect on everybody within the school community and I'm sure the nation as a whole and so we hope that it doesn't happen like it happened last year because our students suffered so much. If you look at it this year already we're having two streams in most of the schools and so the number of hours of study are not even enough and if there were to be another shutdown I'm sure it's going to be complete disaster and so we pray that the measures we are putting in place intensify not only here but all over the country with all schools so that we do not experience a second lockdown. Even at that, Cameroonians are yet to come to terms with the recent increase in the country. I want to see. I want to focus. I want to, to see what the minister is saying is true. Because you cannot, you cannot even work out. You cannot even work out. You say that the the 18, the one, the how many? They are dead. dead. So you cannot even see the person. So I cannot even trust about it. All the same, some are of the opinion that preventive measures should be respected, even as things are not clear in their minds. What well, can I say to take all Cameroonians to wear masks so that to avoid even COVID-19? Understand? So each, every morning, every morning, every morning, every, each time, we should work, we should uh, put a mask and also wash our hands with, with gel. And that is the position of the government to raise sensitization on the respect of these life-saving measures. Following the recent presidential nomination of Mata Minjos as president of the Chamber of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Forestry, he was officially installed into function yesterday in a ceremony presided at by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. He comes up with a challenge to revamp the sector and equally to defend the interests of farmers, breeders and foresters in Cameroon. Details of the story with Vanessa Fio. And Minjos Momini, the new president of the Chamber of Agriculture, Fisheries, Livestock and Forests of Cameroon, Capeth, is challenged to reform the new public finance budget of the sector, buttressed vocational training in agriculture and livestock, and to defend the interest of farmers, breeders and foresters with public authorities. The installation ceremony of Capeth new boss took place on March 9 by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobi, accompanied by a good number of members of government and elites of the East region, precisely those from Bumba and Goko. This put a definite end to the vacancy witnessed in September 23, 2020, after the demise of Joseph Oholang Mata, who spent barely four months at the head of this consular chamber. In the course of the ceremony, Minister Mbairobi called for a minute of silence as tribute to the deceased. Minjos Momeni will have above all a project to create a microfinance dedicated to financing agriculture initiated by one of his predecessors. Launched in February 2016, the fundraising aim at setting up this structure had already made it possible to mobilize around 2 billion francs CFA as the then president of CAPEF indicated in May 2016. Since then, information has not filtered out on this project, also reorganizing the vocational school of Bangela and protecting its staff within this COVID-19 era are some of the setbacks he will have to tackle as outlined by Minade. Challenges that the new president intends to face with the help of the creator and his collaborators, traditional authorities of Bumba and Goko gave their unwavering support to the son of the soil by blessing him in his new mission. Before his appointment as the new president of Capef, the 55-year-old has served as director of studies, programs and cooperation at the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. He joined his original administration in 2017 after a stint at the Ministry of Mines, Industry and Technological Development as Director of Industry. 
Now from the from the east region we now move on to the littoral region as 56 state registered nurses have completed their three year period of training in Kongsamba that is in the Mungo division their graduation ceremony presided at by the divisional officer from Kongsamba 2 was an opportunity for them to seek integration into public service as Mange Fenasu tells us in the following report State registered nurses, the 10th batch from the Nkongsamba Nursing School, recently rounded up their three-year training with a graduation ceremony presided at by the Divisional Officer from Nkongsamba 2 Subdivision, Yufedi Hamed. A ceremony made up of two stages, the oath taking by the 56 laureates, whereby they were officially accepted within the ranks of professionals in the health domain. A second dimension of the ceremony was the handing over of attestations to the graduating students. It should be recalled that in 2020, over 9,205 nurses, midwives and laboratory technicians began training. Meanwhile, between 2019 and 2020, only 551 personnel were absorbed in the Ministry of Public Health. Among these, 285 were nurses. In this slide, after three years of training, both theory and practical, the struggle for integration then begins for the state trains more than what is taken up into the civil service. This, therefore, calls for a strong competition from the laureate to excel in their individual competence. The ceremony was graced by family members and friends. That is it for news in Cameroon and now in news out of Cameroon we move on to Ivory Coast where the official results for Saturday's legislative elections have been released. Results which show that the ruling party won an overwhelming majority in Parliament. However, the opposition has rejected these results. And in Senegal, opposition leader Usman Sonko has suspended his cause for nationwide protest against the government currently in place. This is what Rogia Tububa tells us in the Africa Roundup page. Let's listen. Ivory Coast ruling party has won an absolute majority in parliament. The country's electoral commission announced three days after the parliamentary vote. The West African country's electoral commission said President Alassane Ouattara's party had won the majority of seats in the 255-seat National Assembly. The vote comes just months after Ouattara won a third term in an election marred by unrest that killed at least 85 people. The parliamentary election passed off peacefully in that the West African country can emerge from recent violence. Ouattara's party was challenged by opposition parties led by his predecessors Henri Conan Berdier and Laurent Gbagbo. The main opposition Democratic Party of Ivory Coast has, however, alleged electoral fraud. Senegalese opposition group has suspended calls for massive protests in the West African state after a judge freed opposition leader Usman Sonko from detention. At a press conference, the Movement for Defense of Democracy said it would outline plans for future protests. Senegal has been rocked by deadly clashes between opposition supporters and security forces, which began after Sonko was arrested last Wednesday. At least five people died in the unrest. Sonko has been charged with rape, which he denies and says it is politically motivated. He was also arrested last week on charges of public disorder after scuffles between his supporters and security forces broke out while he was on his way to a court appearance related to the rape charge. Mr. Sonko denies he is trying to overthrow President Macky Sall. He has called for calm and larger but peaceful anti-government protests. 
With that, we have come to the end of this midweek edition of the 7 p.m. newscast on DBS television. Up next is a press review in the English language with Mange Venasius. And at 8 p.m., we have the news in the French language with Fatima Rich Ewane. Thank you for watching, and we do hope to see you when we return tomorrow. Good night.